Do, 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 do. I'm feeling a little bit good tonight, baby. Yeah, baby, man. Our fucking Raiders pulled the game out. We won this game. Man, God dang, it feels good to win two games in a row, man. I'm excited right now because I just fucking got home from driving in traffic from Burbank. I was at the Raiders Central with Mikey Raider down over there in his studios real quick and watching the game with me a shout out to mikey thank you for uh, inviting me down there to the studios and uh be a part of watching the game with you and uh doing a little post game so hey anybody who's never heard of mikey raider which you i know you guys have check out raidercentral.com check out mikey raider the guy has everything going, all the stats, all the Raider clips, anything you want to know about the Raiders, you follow this guy every day because, man, he keeps you up to date, man. So, hey, thank you, Mikey Raider, for the bottom of my heart for having me over to your place and watch the game with you and having me on the post game. Thank you very much, bro. It means a lot to me. You know what? And beyond that, bro, we're good friends, man. You know what? A good buddy of mine. So um, thank you very much for that. And on to the game, what can I say? Man, it started out good. We scored right away. Yeah, the Giants came back on us, but the defense, the defense really stood out to me today. You know, as I was telling Mikey, to me, that defense was like an A minus, B plus. I, I gave them an ass because they came out there and controlled kind of the game. Khalil Mack. What can I say? What can we say about to me it, about Mac? Mac took over the game shh, when he needed to, made big plays, got the stack, got the force fumble. Hell, he was a beast today. Him and Irvin, Irvin picked up a sack. Um, um, Autry, I got a sack. I mean, hey, the defense came came together today, and, and we needed to make the stops. We did. Yeah, we got burned maybe once or so, but um, you know what? The defense held up, and they kept us in the game, and our offense, well, hey, they responded with 24 points, you know, and a big chunk of that was uh, Marshall Lynch for over 100 yards, 101 or 102 something yards, but the one with that big run you guys have, that was fucking beast mode, what we talk about. When we saw beast mode today, that's what we want. That's what we need. We need that consistency for him. But he needs to keep stop taking his ass out. We need him in there. There was crucial plays, but we needed him in there. Yes, one time we went to him like three straight times during a series when it was like third and two. I think then it got down to third, fourth and one. We tried him three straight, three straight times. Use him as a decoy. You, Everybody's up and tied in the box. Thank it to him. Roll car out. Throw your tight end. Cook, Lee, Walford, somebody. And pick up the first down. That's the only thing I had. Some of, some of that play calling was like me and Mike said was kind of basic. But you had to be like Mike, you pointed out to me. He says, hey. We don't have Crabtree, we don't have Cooper, you know, so his weapons were limited today to Lynch and Cook, which was true, you know. So, <clears throat> as far as that, guys, Lynch had a good day, a beast mode day. He was power running when we needed it, you know, so my hats off to him. I gave him my MVP of the game because I think without his running and that big run he made, um, the Raiders would really, really been in a tough situation to pull this game because that game would have been relying on Derek Carr's arm today. And, you know, Derek today had a good day, not a bad day, you know, 22 for 36 for like, what, like 280 yards. But the, the thing that stood out was, yeah, no interception, but no touchdowns. And why? He didn't have the weapons of Crabtree and Cooper. Hopefully, both men will be back. Well, we know Crabtree will be back. Hope that um, Cooper can just get through that protocol of the concussion 
and hopefully be back. I'm expecting him back. We'll find out later this week in practice. So um, until that, that was cool. We got to be a little bit more disciplined too on our penalties, you know. We, I mean, they weren't big, big, you know. But sometimes, you know, when you're in there tight and they come at a point where it might be just false start or a holding, but you had to play. You know, we only had, we had six penalties, you know. So, I mean, it wasn't a big thing, but we, yeah, I like to cut down on those, you know. It's just in crucial times, you can't have penalties. You just can't have them. But the most important thing today, baby, the defense stood up. We put enough points up on the board without Crabtree and Cooper again, like I've been expressing. We got the victory, okay? We got a tough game coming up next week in Kansas City, in a tough stadium where it's loud, it's going to be cold, maybe rainy, it may be fucking snowing. But you know what? If we want this division, if we want to fucking make a statement after that embarrassing loss in fucking Mexico City, which Ken Norton probably should have been fired by then, that would have gave Pagliano at least two weeks to prepare. We might not have won that game, but we would have not got embarrassed as the way we were picked apart by fucking Brady. But hey, that's over with. That's over with. We're on a two-game winning streak. We can see the defense moving around. We're picking up sacks. I think we have nine sacks of what, like Mikey was saying, like in, in two games. We're getting pressure on the quarterback. So the defense is coming around with this new guy, Pargamo, boys, or whatever his name, Pargano. Wait, he's taking over. He, in these last two games, has changed the defense to me, a little drama, uh, drastically because, man, I'm telling you, we're getting pressure. We're blitzing. And we're getting turnovers. Remember in, early in the season, we were in the four-game skid with Northern stuff. We weren't getting interception. We weren't getting forced fumbles, anything like that. Now that we're moving Mac around, you know, they just can't double-team them. So hopefully this will continue until the Kansas City game. Hope our offense can open it up a little bit. Come on, Todd. Open up the playbook more. We got to take shots downfield. So let's see what happens, man. I'm hoping that the Raiders can somehow come out with a victory. Hopefully the defense can hold, hold them under 20. We can get 24, 23, 17, something like that. Maybe, you know, uh, or something like that, because I think we could win, but it's going to be tough. I predicted early in the season it was a loss. I predicted so far this year that we were going to be maybe 10-6, and six, the best 11-5. and five. After that four-game skid, you know, it looked really bleak, especially going into that bye week, and I knew going in with the game after the bye with the Brady game, that was going to be a tough game in Mexico City. So this this last of this half, I see us falling to maybe 8-8. Eight and eight. Mikey said 9-7. I would love to go 9-7 and win the division. 8-8 eight eight is not going to win the division. And you'll miss the playoff. 9-7, you really have to win the division. Because 9-7 is not going to get you the playoffs. Not as a wild card team. So you have to win the division. So, and we got a tough-ass schedule after Kansas City. We still got the Cowboys. We still got the Eagles. We still got the Chokers. I mean, so Raider Nation, you know, hey, when you go to bed at night, ask, ask their guy, let us go on a run. Please, let us go on a run. You know, that Philly game is going to be a tight game. But, uh, man, you know what? It's a, We're on the outside looking in. We need some help, but we can do it. We just got to look towards our division. Start winning the division game, and that starts fucking next week against the fucking Chiefs in their stadium. I would love to punk them, and I know Raider Nation. There's a lot of people going out there. So you guys going out to Kansas City, man, and you guys are going to have to tailgate like the motherfuckers out there and root our team on, man. I mean, hey, I'm sorry for throwing the F-bomb, but God damn it, man. If we can fucking sweep the Chiefs, we all we have to do is, is take care of our division and win because the chokers are going to fucking choke. The Chiefs are on a downspin. Fuck the donkey hoes. They're fucking gone and out. So we control our destiny, and our destiny starts this fucking coming week. So, hey, if you guys are around the L.A. area and down in Pico, I'm going to try to be back at Iguanas 
mm -hmm. this coming week down in Pico, like I said, on uh, Rosemead and uh, the corner of Rosemead and Telegraph. Look it up. Find it on Yelp it or whatever the fuck you call it. Yeah, hey, I'm just an old folk. Yeah, that's why they call me the fucking junkie. I don't know how to work this shit. So, hey, shout out to my record crew family. Record crew, baby. Shout out to Chucky. Check out the big, uh, big Vic, Demonic, Inland Empire, the Savage Valley out there in Palmdale, and to all the Raider Nation all over the United States, and my good friends out there in Hawaii. Hang loose, baby, because we're coming, baby. We'll see what we can make a run. So, hey, take care, Raider Nation. Until next week at this time, I'm hoping I'm talking to you, baby, with a win. All right? So, hey, keep the faith. And let's see what happens, guys. Hey, God bless. Thank you guys for following me. I really appreciate it. From the bottom of my heart, man. Thank you very much, all right? So, hey, have a good night tonight. Enjoy the fucking victory. And you fucking walk into work with that fucking head up high and say, fuck you, haters. I'm out.